So most tech today is built on APIs. APIs, or Application Programming Interfaces, connect systems and enable communication between them. If you're a student in software engineering, this is one of the most fundamental concepts to understand. It doesn't matter if you're the front end or the back end or the middleware, you're probably going to use APIs in some way, shape, or form in your job. Everything is about the API. Now Postman is a tool that simplifies the process of testing, sharing, and documenting these APIs. It's a tool I've used every day as a software engineer for the last eight years. So I'm really excited that they're sponsoring this video because I really believe it's a tool that no matter what your job is in software engineering, you should know how to use. So let's get started with Postman. Postman is a piece of software that will download from the internet. Let's see what type of chip I have. I have an Apple M2, so I'll download the Apple chip. If it said Intel there for you, you would download the version of Postman for the Mac Intel chip. If you're on Windows, download the Windows version. Let's open it up and install it. Once it's installed, we'll create a free account. All right, let's dive in and make a basic request to an API. When we're making a request, we're essentially requesting an action from another software service. Now the software service we'll be requesting an action from is the JSON placeholder service. This has a bunch of placeholder data that we can use to practice working with APIs. It has posts, comments, and many other examples. So keeping this in mind, let's make a request to this service using Postman. To do this, we'll click new in the upper left corner and we'll be making an HTTP request. Now we'll configure the details of the request. We'll be requesting an action from the JSON placeholder service. So we'll want to enter a URL that points to the place where we want to request that action. In this case, that action will be retrieving posts so we can display them. Those posts are located at the posts route. Now we classify this action as a get method. We're getting or retrieving data from the software service. This is the default in Postman, but other types of methods do exist and can be configured within the request. So to configure this request, we enter the location of the data with the URL, and we set our action for what we want the software service to do. Retrieve data with a get. Let's send the request. With the request complete, we can see the response body, headers, and other details in the response pane. The response body contains the data we requested. These are sample posts. Each post contains a user ID, an ID, a title, and a body. We call the format of this a JSON object or JavaScript object notation. Each item within the curly braces represents an object and they're collected together within an array. Now this API source is all about mock data. That's why the title and the body have placeholder text. It's the JSON placeholder API. The response code for this response is a 200. There are many different response codes, but anything with a two at the front means the request was successful. We can also see how much time the request took and the size of the response. Let's save this request in Postman. We'll create a new collection that'll hold our API requests associated with the JSON placeholder API. On the left-hand side, we can see a new collection has been created and it holds the request we just made. We can rename this to something that's a little easier to read. We'll call it get posts. If we exit this out, the request is now easy to access and it's easy to resend it back to the API source. This allows us to test the API and ensure it works as expected. So we just made our first request with Postman. We successfully requested data from another software service. Now, why is this useful? Well, as a software engineer, you can use this to test and develop an API before you integrate it with a client. That client could be a web application or a mobile app or even an IoT device. As a client engineer, you could use this to ensure the API is working as expected as you integrate it with your product. Postman is also a great tool to practice using APIs and learn more about them if you're a student. In fact, they have a program called the Postman Student Program, which is tailored for students new to APIs. 
It's great if you're looking to learn the fundamentals in a beginner-friendly manner, and it's free for students. One thing I really like about it is that it's project-based, so you get practical experience using APIs. To sign up today, you can use the link down in the description. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you again to Postman for sponsoring, and I'll see you next time. Happy coding.